I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Okay. Thank you very much. You can see that we're looking at Luke chapter 14. As you know, we're preparing for our December retreat at this time. In many years now, we've been having Easter retreat and December retreat. And this time now, we're preparing for the December retreat. And if you've been there before, you know that God always gives us great, great blessings. And this December retreat, starting actually this week, Thursday, the 24th of this month, December, until the 27th, is going to be a great, great retreat. It's going to be a unique retreat. And the Lord is going to grant us a great breakthrough and a pouring of His Spirit and of His power and of His provision in Jesus' name. If you've been coming before, you are coming again. I said you are coming again. And then when you come there, you see what the Lord is doing. You'll say, I never saw anything like this before because it's going to be wonderful. And those who have not been coming before, this will be your first time. It's going to be an unforgettable encounter, unforgettable experience with the Lord in Jesus' name. Now we're going to look at Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 16. Then said he to him, a certain man made a great supper, and he bade many. The Lord Jesus Christ was responding to the outburst proclamation or statement that somebody had made. Actually, the Lord Jesus Christ was having supper in a particular place. Let's look at this from verse 1. And it came to pass, as they went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat dinner, and uh, to eat bread, rather, on the Sabbath day, they watched that they watched him. They wanted to see what he will do. To start with here, we need to learn a lot from the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the head of the church. He's the cornerstone of the church. He's the very foundation of the church. I told you before that there are people that, the way they understand their Bible, they become more serious than Jesus, more righteous than Jesus, more sanctimonious than Jesus, and they think that they know more than Jesus Christ ever knew. And they bring all these traditions and all these laws, and they say, if you're a Christian, if you're born again, this is what you do, and this is not what you do. And they go beyond the scriptures. Look at this, for example, it says, it came to pass. As he went into the house of one, of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him. Do you know that the Pharisees actually as a religious body, as the denominations, they need to believe the truth. They need to understand the truth. They didn't know about salvation. They did not even know about being born again. They didn't know anything spiritual. And yet the chief Pharisee here invited Jesus Christ to come and eat bread. And Jesus will make use of every opportunity to pass across the message. Because all those Pharisees, even though they were not born again, they were creatures of God. And he made them all. He came into this world and he came to his own. And his own knew him not. His own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons and the children of God. By the way, many of us, if we're invited to the house of a sinner just to come and eat bread, we say, no, we don't do that. We are born again. And we think we know more than Jesus Christ. It was at that time when Jesus Christ was there eating bread with this chief Pharisee that something came up. I'm looking at it now from verse 14. And Jesus Christ made use of that opportunity to teach the people, to instruct the people. Every chance we have in our lives, every opportunity we have in our lives, we should use it to fulfill the Great Commission. 
whether you are with a denomination that do not believe in the Bible, a denomination that is not born again, a Pharisee that does not know about spiritual things, you use simply opportunity to emphasize the ways of the kingdom, the watch of the kingdom, the will of the king. And here is what Jesus Christ was doing at this time. Would you look at it in verse 12? Then said he also to him, that bade him, that is now he's talking to the chief Pharisee, when thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also be thee again, and a recompense be made to thee. Jesus used that situation, that bread they were taking, that supper they were taking, that food they were eating, and he went from that to teaching about the kingdom of God. Jesus is a perfect example. He wants us to take every situation we find in life, whether with a believer, with an unbeliever, with a Pharisee, with a Sadducee, with a religious fanatic, or with any other person, use that individual situation and preach the gospel unto them in verse 13. But when thou makest a peace, Call the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind, and thou shalt be blessed. For they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Another thing we learn over here is that the Lord Jesus Christ did not look at those people, whether they will believe the resurrection of the just or not. He just told them the truth. That's why he said, for this purpose am I come that I might give witness to the truth. And whether with Pharisee or Sadducee denomination or ministry or whatever it is, he was giving witness to the truth every time. In verse 15, when one of them that sat at meat was him, heard these sayings, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus now said, Then he said unto him, you understand then the context and the background of what Jesus Christ was talking about. He was eating in the house of that chief Pharisee. And somebody said, wouldn't it be wonderful, blessed, wonderfully blessed, that will eat in the kingdom of God. And this fellow that said that did not know about the kingdom, was not born again. And therefore Jesus now wanted to emphasize what it means to be in the kingdom. And then you are invited to the kingdom, you repent of your sin, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a member of the body of Christ, a real child of God. But if you reject and give excuse, then you'll be excluded from the kingdom. Let's look at it from verse 17 now. And sent a servant at supper time to say to them that were bidding, come for all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. What was Jesus talking about? It was in the house of a Pharisee. And the Pharisees rejected him. And they rejected the king of the kingdom. They rejected the kingdom. They rejected salvation. And was going to show them the tragedy, the peril, the danger, and the damnation of rejecting the kingdom of God. And so he now gave them a parable. And the parable was interpreting to mean that the kingdom came to the Jews. Salvation came to the Jews. And what Jesus Christ brought came to the Jews. But he rejected it. And it is that rejection was talking about now. And then he said, it's going to go to all the people because the people that ought to accept had rejected. Look at it now in verse 18. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excuse. Now, the excuse here was not tenable, was not witchy enough, because before you buy the land, you examine it, you know the dimension, you know what you are buying before you ever buy. But he said, I bought the land already, and I want to go and see it. And then he said, excuse me, I will not be able to come. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them to try them. I pray thee, have me excuse. Before you buy yoke of oxen, you're going to try them. Will they work? Are they strong enough? Are they healthy? Are they sick? And are they experienced? Are they new? Are they whatever? You're going to find out. But he said, I've just bought this. 
and I want to go and check up on them. Another one said, look at it in verse 20. It says, another one said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. What an excuse that is, but the Bible says, the word of God says, let him that is married be as though he wasn't married. That you will not allow marriage or bearing children or family responsibilities to take away the kingdom of God away from you. Because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And getting married should not interrupt and should not hinder getting to the kingdom of God or receiving the invitation that the king of kings is giving unto you or giving to any of us. And so that servant came and showed this Lord these things then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the, of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Here Jesus Christ was telling this Pharisee, You see, Pharisee, you're missing a great opportunity. You're missing a great chance, the greatest chance of your life. The kingdom of God has come. And the king of the kingdom has come. Salvation has come. Righteousness has come. And all of heaven has come unto you. And you are rejecting because of religion. You are rejecting because of your tradition. And God is going to replace you in the kingdom. What a lesson we're learning here that when God calls you to something, an opportunity, a privilege, a ministry, a commission, and into the kingdom. And then you have one excuse or the other to have your own way. You reject it, the Lord will excuse you, but he's going to replace you. It doesn't mean that the kingdom will not come just because you are rejecting it. It doesn't mean that salvation will not be given to other people just because you are rejecting it. What they rejected, the Lord gave unto other people. And so he sent the servant, as he said, go to the highways and the streets and the corners of the city and tell all those people, the men and the blind and the lame and everybody, the impotent, and bring them in so that everything that has been provided will now be given unto all these. And they were told in verse 22, and the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. The servant came back to report. You see, when you're giving something to do, you must come back and report, this is what has been done. And you must be able to say, this is done, and this is still the privilege of the opportunity that is still available. And then we're told that the Lord said in verse, in verse 23, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Look at verse 24. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidding shall taste of my supper. The Lord was uh, telling this chief Pharisee that all you Pharisees rejecting the kingdom of God and rejecting the word of God and rejecting the salvation of the Lord as you reject and give excuse, you will not taste of the supper. You will not taste of the kingdom of God, of the benefits of the kingdom of God because you have rejected other people are going to come in. Let me show you the interpretation of this in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 45. Acts chapter 13, verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and they speak against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Here we find them, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Jewish people, the religious, hard-hearted people, the callous people, and the people that will not accept the salvation that Jesus brought, the righteousness that Jesus brought, the redemption that Jesus brought, the good things of the kingdom and of the king that Jesus Christ brought, they will not accept. And when they saw other people accepting other people, joining in other people, flowing in, then they began to contradict and blaspheme. And then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should force have been spoken to you. It was necessary. You, descendants of Abraham, and you Jewish people, and you people of the covenant, the Lord said, He'll send the Messiah, the Christ, unto you, and He'll be your Savior and your shepherd. It was right that the gospel should have first come unto you. But then He said, But seeing ye put it from you, 
and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. That's the meaning of the parable. When those Jewish people, religious people, denominations, when they rejected the word of salvation, now go to the hedges of the highways and go to all those places and the people that do not have any denomination umbrella over them, any denominational control over them, any tradition of the elders over them, go and call them and they will come in. Verse 27, for so as the Lord commanded us saying, I have said thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and they glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life, believe. I pray you'll believe in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good amen. But we're going to apply this. It's applicable to salvation. It's applicable to sanctification. It's applicable to the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon us. And it's applicable to going for the retreat that the Lord is preparing. A great peace and a great supper and great blessings for everyone. And he says all things are ready. And he wants us to talk about that. And so we're going to make the application of the word of God in the right way. It's a, the passage of the scripture we're looking at was not written just for retreat. It's reaching for us to be able to get the benefits of heaven upon our lives. And we're going to make a well-rounded, scriptural, balanced application of the word of God. All things are now ready. Everybody, can you say that with me? All things are now ready. Can you say that again? Once more. All things are now ready. The Lord was telling the people actually that now salvation is ready. Telling them healing is ready. Telling them deliverance is ready. Telling them the power of the Holy Ghost is ready. Telling them everything they ever wished for. Everything they ever prayed for. Everything they ever wanted from the old covenant. That everything is now ready. They were looking for that the Messiah will come. And that when Messiah comes, there will be peace. There will be prosperity. There will be joy. There will be victory. There will be dominion. There will be triumph. Everything they were asking for. That when the Messiah comes, the knowledge of the Lord will fill the earth. As the waters cover the ocean. Everything, knowledge and blessing and gifts, everything was now ready and the announcement was made unto them come in and you can have everything available unto you and we're going for the retreat and we're making announcement and proclamation everywhere and we're telling them whatever your need may be whatever the challenge of your life may be and whatever it is your desires are so that your joy will be full for yourself for your wife, for your husband, for your children for your relatives, for neighbors and for your co-workers, everything is now ready I pray you'll be a partaker of that in Jesus' name. We're going to divide the study to three parts. Number one, provision of sufficient supplies by God. The provision of sufficient supplies by God. Number two, the proclamation by the servants of God. The proclamation, the publicity, the promotion, the blessing it abroad, and they're talking about it, that everything is now ready, that if you are a child of God, if you are a servant of the Lord, you will take the message as well, and you will tell everybody, wherever you find, any man, any woman, any boy, any